All right, welcome to another video uh, from RPG Site. This is our casual mode series. And today, well, I should say last week we looked at a uh, at an indie tactical RPG, Fey Tactics. And today we're looking at another recently released independent tactical RPG known as Other Side. Um, my name is Adam Vitali, and with me today are James Glizio. Hey. And Brian Vitali. Hello. All right, so Other Side, it released on Steam, PS4, and Xbox One uh, about a week ago uh, prior to this video, and it is also coming to Switch in the future this year at some point. It is an independent uh, RPG developed by a French developer known as Lightbulb Crew and published by uh, Focus Home Interactive. And for this video, I th I'm going to start basically right at the opening, but skip the opening um, kind of cinematic and tutorial stuff, so right at the beginning. So, let me just go right into it. That was some nice music, like new metal, turn of the century yeah. stuff on that homepage. Okay, so other side. Um, this is a, like I said, it's a tactical RPG, but it's also a roguelike. Now, to give a quick premise to things, um, I am in like a it's like a mix between like a bleak city hellscape slash it's got like this internals of a brain that I'm in and those are like synapses in the back. It's kind of this weird metaphysical reality that this whole game takes place in. Um, so the characters in this game are known as daughters and your the daughters here are basically uh, these manifested offspring of this mother character sitting on the title screen here. And these are your characters that you play through the entire game with. And they come in three different classes. Got a shield class, gun gunner support class, and sword class. I just want to say that like you could not get way more like opposite end of the ball field comparing going from Fate Tactics to this. Yeah. <laughs> like, we pair them together because they've released so close to, to each other and they're both independent strategy RPGs. But one's like this bubblegum cute fairy tale and this one's like play as these like gothic ladies with new metal in the background yeah so this game is a it doesn't have a very outward story which is one reason why i just skipped the opening also for the sake of time but um basically the game is set up into five different chapters or acts if you will and if you look at the bottom of the screen there i'm on day one which is the first act um well this section and basically if you look at that timeline there there are six battles and then a boss at the end. And the boss is actually sitting there in the background. It's, he's a plague doctor sort of creature thing. Um, so I'm is there anything I'm supposed to be looking at in this like web of tendrils? With this, like, heart oh, not really. The, 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 the main things on this uh, UI here are the at the bottom basically telling you how close I am to the boss. And, that's a, and then the menu on the left. The rest is just aesthetic. And obviously, the aesthetic is striking in terms of the at least it stands out not many very not very many games look at this this monochromatic style with red accents here um, i'm just going to go ahead and jump into the first battle so this is how battles work in this game if you listen to my talking about this on the podcast recently um you basically just pick it from a list now i'm at the very beginning of the game so the list literally only has one entry here um a hunt which is basically just kill all uh, enemies sort of mission and I only have three daughters. And they're all level one. I'll just go ahead and start. One of each class. Is that just how it's supposed to start? Yeah, pretty much. And then is that the mother in, the, in red there? Yeah. Is this game, like, scary? Or is it just borrowing the kind of the art style? Um... It's just it's hard to make like, an style. isometric game scary. All right, so the maps are kind of like miniature maps here. So I have two enemies down here and two enemies up here. And one thing that sets other side apart from other um, tactical RPGs is that it is not like rigidly turn-based where it's my turn, your turn. Instead, there's a timeline at the bottom where it says it shows whose turn is it now, and that's going to be on the very far left of the timeline there. So right now it's Serene's turn, and she's my Blademaster. Belle's turn is coming up in 12 
units and then some enemies and so on. So I'm going Are to Are these three characters like randomly generated their names and their appearance and their stats? Yes, pretty much. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I've already beaten this game. Uh, I think I'm just going to I can check their ranges kind of just make sure I'm outside of their range. And just have them come to me. Are enemies like class based or is it just kind of you know what these guys do? Uh, they're not really class based, just there's just different enemy types that do different things. The ones on the top there, I don't even remember what they're called, scavengers. They're just basically fast creatures that aren't very strong and these ones are stronger but they're slower, so on. Alright. Oh yeah, I, I have the super, I have the turbo mode on. So, there's an AP bar in the upper left, and what that shows is how many action points they have to, to do on their turn. So I already had her shoot at this guy, and that used up 25 action points. And you can see she has 75 more, so I'm going to shoot at this guy now. So now she has 50 action points. Now there's an interesting wrinkle here where uh, if you look at the bottom timeline, if I end her turn, her next turn is placed at the 50 mark. You see that? So that's when her next turn will appear. But however, if you if you go into using the 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 last 50 of her action points, uh, you might have noticed there's a little arrow there or a little divider there that basically means she'll be able to she can do more on this turn, but her next turn will be delayed. So there's a little bit of a balance in terms of do I want her to have a couple more actions now, or do I want her next turn to come around sooner? So I'm just gonna wait. To be honest, I might like die here because I'm starting a new game. And I don't. I might not realize how weak my characters are. Oh, that guy's dead. Striking. I've played some other sort of game where you can like exert extra effort on your turn at the expense of your later turn being like weaker. I, I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, Bravely Default had a sort of thing like that where you could either bank time that you could use, that you could use all at once by defending or you could just go all out and not be able to uh, move for like four turns or whatever. I guess it's a similar concept. I, I wasn't thinking of Bravely Default, but I think I might have been thinking about Octopath Traveler, which has some similar DNA. Now there's only one enemy left, so I might as well have her use her next couple of slashes. You said that was like you might die, but that seemed pretty easy. But, like as yeah. I would expect for the first fight, everyone's leveled up. Come they all gained a skill. Slow all right. We've uh, from one nightmare. All right. Um, you really don't care. Like this is very story light. You aren't kidding. Yeah. All right. They got a new skill because they got level two. Um, this is my defender unit. And so when they get reach certain levels, and you can see on the right there, on Locked at Mastery 5, 10, and 15, they get a new skill, and you can pick one of two at each. Um, I'm going to have her get the Blacksmith's Grace skill, which is a defense skill. Um, my are, gunner... Are these passive, or are they think I didn't see... Oh, oh okay. I, say, I really liked the little touch where it gets you a preview of what the skill actually looks like before oh, yeah. you even choose it. Uh... Da -da -da. Okay, so like you see the different icons. Uh, that that icon there on shot is basically an instant action, which is like you do it and it happens. This is an interruption skill, which is basically it will happen when an enemy attacks. And this is a reaction skill, which is this will take place when some other uh, prerequisite comes into play. And I believe for that one, it was when an enemy, when an ally is attacked. Er Lightning Strike is a good one. Lightning Strike is dash five tiles to deal up to 361 damage. So it basically means they can move and attack with 30 AP, which is usually cheaper than individually moving and then attacking. Now, each... I don't want to explain too much because I don't want to just bore you, but um, each skill that each character has, you see a little, there's a little uh, circle on the right of it. You can equip what is called a memory to it. Memories are basically random drops. And they have various effects. So you can see, like, increases the damage, increases the critical chance, increases the damage. I'll just do the increase the damage one for now. 
and you do get a bunch of these throughout the course of the game and of course the farther you get the better these get so there's a quite a there's a ways to change which skills um they're all the exact effects that they have you can check their stats as well now she actually got a trait in the last battle um traits come about they're like passive bonuses and they come around for a variety of reasons I'm, I think she got the first kill, which gave her the trait place, basically plus 50 damage, always. Aggressive, makes sense. Right. And so depending on how you like actually play the game, sometimes characters will kind of be tailored a little bit towards that. Ah, da -da. I'm going to skip some of these. Now, I'm going to wait for the next day. Time slips by. So can you, I know you said it's story light, but can you give us a little bit of the premise? Because all, all I've captured so far is that the mother is sending out her daughters to fight, like, yeah, these I should have done that earlier. Creatures, yeah, so basically, and this is it, like, this is everything the game gives you, is that there is a person known as the child, who is a, someone you're trying to save from this manifestation known as suffering. But in order to get that far, you have to take on these other bosses as well. And so we are basically on our mission to save the child from suffering. But first, we have to get through this Plague Doctor boss here. So let me just do the next mission. Uh, I can just do the, basically two different hunts. So the last mission, what was the, what was the type of mission that was called again? A hunt. Also yeah. hunt. Or, okay. Yeah. A wretched stench to mark a vile horror. All right. I have to say, I like the overall aesthetic. I mean, it's, it's very like, unique. Well, I mean, I've seen other games use a similar aesthetic before, but uh, I think the most infamous one was probably Hatred. <laughs> That oh. one game, yeah, because like it was like monochrome except for blood. But obviously, this one looks to be a. Uh... I guess there was also like Mad World on Wii. Um, that was similar, although it was more cartoony. Yeah, it was more like comic book almost, I'd say. Yeah, like a mo like an uncolored manga. All right. So this is basically a nerd's tactical RPG. You have to really love systems-based gameplay. And I guess, since you said it's roguelike, yeah, it, I'm assuming it gets pretty damn challenging. Yeah, I'm. if I get to the boss in this video, I'm probably going to die. At least it seems pretty snappy. They actually, we were playing Gate Tactics uh, last week, right? And that in that game, it can get bogged down when there's so many like actions going in a row. But here, like everything is just like snip, snap, snip. Hmm. I'm going to have her go into her last 50 of her AP to take out that guy. So her next turn is going to be later. But I got rid of them. them. Okay. Um. They actually did fix some things already in this game that I can tell. Like the turbo mode is easier to control now. Before it like it was like super like sensitive or it was really hard to control. I'm using a controller, but you can play with keyboard and mouse of course on PC. So they've already patched it up a little bit. Oh it's snappy because you're playing in turbo mode. Yeah. I don't know if I could play like the original Final Fantasy Tactics without a turbo mode in this day and age. Whatever we can to prevent this torture. Memories of another life. Guard them well. Do the uh, daughters ever talk or no? Um, they sometimes just murmur things. Okay, Bell took some damage. That'll, uh, I'll, that's, that's pretty important. I guess I'll just mention it now. It is very hard to heal in this game. It is a roguelike, so you are expected to eventually um, fail and have to restart and have to start over in a way. 
And I guess in order to fit with that roguelike structure, um, if you could just heal very readily, probably wouldn't work too well because then you would never have to reset. Let's see. Okay, so these two gunner enemies, they, they're doing what is called a delay skill. And you can see in the UI on top of Joy, there's these two little icons there. And those are basically she's being targeted by these gunners doing a, an attack. And if you look at the timeline at the bottom, it shows when those are going to take place. You can see them in between yep. Serene and Bell. And so there are several abilities like that where it may not it may not take place instantly, but in the future. So you kind of have to work around that. So yeah, Bell was taking some damage. And she and I got a couple more traits to that battle. I think he explained this on the podcast, but is it always three, or you can get more? Eventually, you can do four, but most battles it's three. Or it's three people. All right, let's just see what trait she got. Um, movement range minus one, armor plus thirty. So she's more defensive, but can't move as far. Most of the traits are positive, but there's a few that just have a slight negative effect. Um, I have I have a really dumb question that you probably have no. This is not something you pay attention to, but are the classes, weapons, hairstyles, face styles, are they all random, or are they like the, tied the hair, to what, what the hair you're is, using? The hair is random. So if I create, so here's I guess here's uh, another element. So I can create more daughters. That spooky germinate daughter. Yeah. But the thing is, I felt like it's almost not worth doing because they're going to be level one and I won't be able to use them or I will be able to use them, but they're not going to be as good as the ones I've been using. That kind of touches on what I said in my review where it kind of feels like that some of these systems are just not really worth uh, like actually using. Now, I'm trying to remember how I did this. Oops. I can sacrifice one daughter to heal another so like I can have Joy sacrifice herself to heal Bell, but I also felt like that was really, really wasn't worth using either. It does give them a new trait, like here it gives them a plus two percent dodge. But then I'm like down a character, and then I can germinate a new yeah, one. Yeah, like yeah, losing a character does not seem like it's worth healing up a, a character and giving them a super tiny little dodge bonus. Now every daughter can only pr can only do one battle a day. You can do more than one battle if you use more than one if you use more daughters. I'm just gonna go to the next battle. There's a little there's a little exclamation point icon on this one, which just has a an extra bonus. So all enemies have more health, but they have less armor now. All right. So more. there's just different like specific. Yeah, for like day -based based boons or penalties. Exactly. All right. So the next mission. I'm hoping I can get to the boss without dying. I'm not used to my characters being this weak. What more must we sacrifice before how, the end? So how long does it take? Like, how are we halfway to the boss? About, yeah. Did to this child. Cool. What forces they arrayed against an innocent? Have we seen the child yet? Um, you won't see him in this video. <laughs> I don't think. Oh, he's like Vader, All right? Hmm. The UI and the controls do take a little bit of getting used to. I think they actually have patched the UI in places too already to make it a little bit easier. So like here, I, got, I gave her that lightning blade skill recently. If I were to have her move to him and then attack, it would cost 17 move AP to move and then 30 more to attack. But since I got that lightning strike skill, I can do that, and it's just cheaper. <laughs> so that, that that ends up being something to consider. So some some abilities are like for economy of AP usage. Yeah. I think what makes that UI look so little um, kind of hard to see is probably because how dark it is. Unlike other games are like more colorful, right? Yeah, it, it, like I said, it does take a little bit of getting used to. Um, these people are about to attack um, Joy, but if I move her out of the way... There. By the way, for anyone wondering, that was uh, Chow, who joined us halfway. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, Chow. Hey, how's it going? Shackles. 
Now, one thing about this game that is very, very common is that oftentimes not all the enemies will be up here on the map right away. So if you look at the top, it says seven enemies remaining, but there's only three on the map right now. One, two, three. So they'll show up later. So there's always like so it's like a uh, reinforcement in a way. Yeah. Is this is this still a hunt battle? I was paying attention. Yeah, they've all been hunts so far, and kind of just started the game. Most of them are. Hmm. I was just wondering if there's like a, a battle mode where it's like you have to outlast him. Yeah, there's other battle modes. I was hoping to show you. I think I'm going to have her spend her extra turn to, to kill that guy. Oh shoot. Bleed them dry. No mercy. All right, if you look at the timeline, there's like these little hands coming out of the ground. That's when enemies appear. And if I look at the map, here they are. What is the number? That is... Oh, so wait, the, the timeline is 100. 100. Yeah, so it just is basically gives a numerical value on... It's They actually call it initiative. So it's a numerical value on how much time there is between turns and whatnot. Those guys are fast, but don't do a ton of damage. They actually can't really hurt Bell. So throughout this, throughout these missions, um, One less to plague the innocent. you'll hear like the boss kind of taunting us. I'm actually going to ask about that. Is that the surgeon <laughs> or the doctor or whatever? He uh, the is surgeon called? is his name. I think I called him the doctor, but he's called the surgeon. Surgeon is a type of doctor. Of yeah. Life. Guard them well. Yeah, Serene took some damage. They all leveled up again. Uh, Bell got another trait. Let me just check that trait. So someone else might be playing this game differently from you, where they do multiple battles on a day to like train up multiple daughters so that they can do more of this uh, like trait trade-off and reviving and healing and things like that. I kind of felt that getting, going through battles is not doesn't take that long. Oh, I think this is going to be a, a small cutscene introducing the Surgeon. Deeper still, the answer hides, buried in the flesh. Life unworthy of life feeds our inquiry. What we do is a mercy to the world. A mercy. Spooky. I was actually like, I saw his image in one of the loading screens. I'm like, is that the surgeon? Nah, he can't be. Yeah. And there he is. Yep. I can actually take them on right now, if you want. Um, being a roguelike, there are systems in place to um, make replaying it not always take so long. Like, So I can skip a few days and fight him right now and kind of jump to the end if I want. Um, but I'm not, I think I'm going to just do another battle to see. They're all hunts again. <laughs> I was hoping to show a different type of battle. A question if you sacrifice all the daughters to like one unit, are you able to like get like one overpowered unit and just play well? The it? traits right now that you get for sacrificing daughters, since they're pretty relatively low in level, um, aren't kind of not great, but that's actually something I haven't I never really messed with. Is uh, like I was I like kind of theory crafting, like, could you like cyclically? Sacrifice, and you can also eventually revive daughters. Like you could cyclically sacrifice them and revive them, and like st stack traits on each other. Like well, if you could do that and just have keep stacking traits, or I don't know if it maybe overwrites it in some way. Um, but I never really bothered with that. My general like strategy for this game was to basically just keep going as far as I can with the same primary group of daughters. They're going to keep getting stronger um, over time. And if they die, I just have to reload, but they, the, my, my three daughters basically keep their strength and you can get them back. It's, it, it's harder to get them back initially, but eventually you can get them back pretty trivially. And then they just keep getting stronger and stronger as you play. And I never really bothered with the uh, 
Oh shoot, did I waste? I didn't mean to have her. They call it going into burst when you use their last 50 AP in a turn. So if you look at the timeline at the bottom, Joy doesn't move for quite a while now. Shred them down. And I can see, like, for instance, if I move her here, if I move Belle here, um, it's going to cost 31 AP, and she won't be able to basically attack unless I go into burst. But if I look at the timeline at the bottom, I see her next move will take place actually before the enemies does. So it's like, okay, might as well have her... Oh, I totally messed up there. It's going to have her move and then wait. I accidentally just clicked wait. And I just kill that guy. A bitter victory. The doctor has sent a new atrocity. Hmm. I think I'm going to go into burst to kill this one. Because it's not enough just to win the battle. You have to make sure you win it with as much health remaining as possible. Yes. Which is kind of that, interesting. That's, that's crucial. Cool. You don't heal after after battles, and it's difficult to heal in general. So maintaining your HP as long as you can, and down. without knowing that you can't easily heal, it is pretty crucial. So this is not like Fire Emblem casual mode. No. Like I said, these guys are fast, but they don't do a lot of damage. For some reason, they keep attacking Bell, who doesn't has high armor. Is there any sort of like taunting mechanic? Um, I don't think so. Actually, now that I think about it, like I don't think there's a way to have like do a skill and have enemies target a certain unit. Certain bosses do have patterns in terms of like which units they will attack that you kind of have to get used to. You kind of have to realize. Like, for example, there are some bosses that will always attack the closest daughter, and there are some that will always attack the one with the highest health, and so on. So you can kind of exploit that bigger enemy now. This guy can do a lot of damage. Hopefully I can kill him before he gets a turn. There we go. Are, are, are any enemies, like, specific to the chapters, where, like, you fight specifically the surgeon's creations, and then they don't show up anymore? Um, or the not, doctor's creations? Not so specifically. No, he is a surgeon. Though the danger passes. Like those plague doctors show up in later levels, even if they seem like they're based off of this guy. Suffering sends monsters. We they're all hunts still. Actually, these are kind of random. So one of my larger complaints or criticisms about the game is that it does get a little bit repetitive, and maybe you can already see it, where like there's sort of these mini missions that you do, where you pick them out of a list, you kind of just go in them, knock them out, well, go to the next one sort of thing. So that, when I said like there's no bespoke missions, like sometimes you'll just happen to pick the same mission where it's like, oh, I've seen this layout before, but they're, it's not like, um, they're not like story missions or anything like that. So there's seven enemies, I think, actually all of them are on the screen already. Usually for a level like this, I, try, I usually just wait to have them come to me since it's not time sensitive. It almost seems like it'd be a good fit for Switch, where you just do a couple missions and then turn off. Sometimes well, the UI it is to Switch uh, later, going by the website. Yeah, it is. Sometimes the UI is not like it takes is not fantastic. Like for instance, if you look now, when I highlight Joy, who is my gunner, there's a little icon that appears above the enemies on the left side of the screen, and that means that I can attack them right now. I will do that on. Actually, they're not attacking yet, so I think I'm going to have her move here and attack this guy. Shoot. I was hoping that would kill him. I'll wait. Alright, um, I think I'm going to have you do this. One hit kill. No, uh, this guy's about to attack, but if I move her out of the way, get rid of that guy. Whatever we can to prevent this torture. Memories of another life. Guard them well. I think they're all gunner. Oh no, there's 
two gunner enemies and a couple of slashy enemies. Do the arenas ever change flavor based on the chapter you're in or not really? I mean, there's a couple of different layouts, but otherwise you kind of end up seeing the same places. I hate to sound like cynical, but you can kind of see like, you know, the, the, it's a limited scope game. So some of these things you just kind of have to take with it. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I think the best approach to this game is just kill like all gunners that does, right? Eventually, like right now my gunner is pretty strong and like being able to attack from range is... I ah, no. It's pretty... is useful. But eventually, like, my sword person ends up being, like, way stronger than your gunner. So, like, it's, a, it's balanced reasonably well. Oh, that guy put up armor. Where your gunners are, are going to end up doing far less damage than your sword people. Serene's almost dead. Oh, I didn't even see that he had an attack up. Well, maybe I'll get to show you what it's like when you fail, because I'm getting there. It seems like if you like, does this game have a codex or like a journal entries or? Yeah, it does. It seems like one of those games that has like lore behind the story, even if it doesn't have much of an outward story itself. Yeah, this is actually kind of interesting, actually kind of weird in a way. So the mother character, these memories I pick up, um, they uh, not only work as like accessories, but they they uh basically unlock this the story that's in this um that's in the codex here and it kind of gives a background to the mother and as you can see there's a lot that i haven't gotten yet and like some of these are actually like reasonably well written uh, as part of a short story here like for example this one here actually, i actually actually specifically like this one so let me just read it, I guess. The wind whips across or at my face as I dash around the large oak tree for the 13th time, collapsing in a breathless heap on the ground. Warm laughter fills the air, and from beneath the tree, the guide speaks with a bemused lilt to his voice. What happened, little magpie? Yesterday, you ran around it five more times. If I'm going to convince those Nostra heads to send you along to their esteemed swordsmen, you ought to be able to do a few more laughs. Now up you get. My lungs burning, I get up again, but not before throwing a fistful of grass in his direction. And so, like, there's, like, these reasonably well-written, like, prose that's in this codex here that kind of gives the background to the mother's story but it just it feels a little bit divorced from the rest of the game in a way and it's like it's kind of there if you want to indulge in it and if you don't you kind of ignore it yeah <laughs> i do i do like the art that goes along with some of them though yeah it shows basically her going from a child to an adult to the mother and basically how that all works what's well, actually kind of funny is i didn't really read any of those my first playthrough until it was like at the end but at, at that point i guess i could uh I wasn't really missing any, so I could kind of just read through it front to back without any gaps. Let's see. So my characters are weak. Um, I think I'm just going to try to confront the boss just to show him, show you that. Because I don't know if I can make another, <laughs> do another battle without someone dying. You're pretty much for sure going to lose. Yeah. You're sort of expected to lose the first time. You wouldn't want my scalpel to. I don't know how many times it took me to beat the first boss in a... Uh... Rogue Legacy. Right. Our research must I also lost to the uh, O2 boss in Final Fantasy 10-2 uh, last mission. As you can see, my roguelike experience is very limited. Destroyed a child and called it mercy. So every boss in this game has a different um, pattern or strategy to it. So this boss's thing... And you wouldn't know this right away, and, and you would have to like play him a few times or at least once to figure it out. He has these like minions. The minions will rarely attack you, but what they are doing is they are boosting his armor to ridiculous levels. And they're also giving him an initiative boost, which basically moves his turn up. Oh shoot, I didn't realize. <laughs> you can move that far.
Does he? Does his armor buff go away if you take out the minions or no? Well, so if you if I look at him, his armor is two thousand, which is ridiculous for this point in the game. There's no way I can do any damage to that. So what you want to do is you want to take out his minions first. He has four or five of them, four of them. But however, if you take out all of his minions, he goes into like a berserk mode, and you don't really want that either. So yes, yeah, so you want to take out. Generally, what the general strategy you want to do. Shoot, I have a little bit of health left. Is um, you want to take out one all wide. but one minion, but his the last 500 armor is still pretty high at this point in the game. Um, one of my characters is gonna die. Uh, 500 armor is still pretty high for this point in the game, and so what you kind of end up wanting to do is leaving one of these guys behind, and then you want to like delay their turn as much as you can to basically have that armor bonus wear off and then be able to get some attacks in before they can re re replace it. Hey, geez. Ah, she did. Good job. Oh yeah, he can summon more. Yeah, I can see why that wouldn't be very clear starting out. You would think, oh, just kill all of them, and then you do, and then he goes into, you know, enrage mode, and then you're like, oh, well, damn it. Luckily, the minions don't really attack you, just he does. They can attack, but... Only I'm like waiting for one of them to just, like, gank you. <laughs> they don't attack very often. Okay, he's got one more minion there. See, I wasn't really expecting to win, just the way this game is balanced. To be honest, I, I might not even really be able to do much damage to him at all because his armor is still too high. Yeah, you can you can get a preview of what if you hadn't noticed, you can get a preview of how much damage you're gonna do. So she's gonna do zero damage three times. Nice. Th that doesn't seem useful. So, oh, okay. but there all that penalty, all that stuff went away. I saw that. Yeah. So now he only has now he only has 500 armor. So like, if I was strong enough, I'd want to use skills to try to delay this guy's turn, and then have that armor buff wear off, and then attack him. But I'm probably not going to be able to do that. Mm, actually. So I did an interrupt skill. Hmm. Shred them down. All right. He's lost his armor. I'm gonna be able to do like a minimal amount of damage to him. When my blade master was still alive. Now he's gonna put it back on. So yeah, that's the general strategy, but I'm not gonna win. <laughs> so I'm guessing we'll see this in just a second. So what is the in in game explanation for why everything like restarts? Yeah. Or is it just there? Is, there is nothing that restarts. Just more, three more daughters come in. I'm actually not we'll sure. See. I'm gonna die. Actually, I'll get one more turn. No, I won't. <laughs> All right, I can re I can resurrect daughters. So I got to level three and four, roughly. They're still getting a little bit of XP for that battle. Alright, so now I can basically reset. And so, like, these are bonuses that I've unlocked so far. This one is sort of a gimme. I start a run with two memories. Memories are those accessories that you could put on skills to raise their stats. This one, if you attach a total of 25 memories to skills, I unlock that. And if you collect Vitae, which is a currency that I've totally ignored up till now, close 10 synapses, you close a synapse for each battle you do, so on, 15, 30, 20, 30. I've done, I've dealt 10,000 points of damage, so I now all my daughters will gain 15% uh, max health. Like, okay, I might have all unlocked that. Um, I'm a, I'm, since I discovered the boss of the Plague Arrow, which is the first chapter, I can now resurrect a fallen daughter. It gives me a coin to start with. And there's quite a few more as you unlock the, throughout the game. 
Uh, so, you, you can already see like your next run is going to be way easier because you'll have more health, you'll have a free revive. Yeah. And it's ramps from there. Well, here's the thing. This so-called doctor has revealed himself. Oh, actually, I think I skipped this one. I skipped this before. This plays right before. Oh, I just barely a cutscene there. Not even a cutscene. So if I go to my inner void now, I have three new daughters that they give me. Yeah, three different names. And they start at level one, and they have different hairstyles too, or they're supposed to, because hair is sort of random. Now, I have one resurrection token. Remember the Here are the daughters that I had in the past. I'm just going to resurrect Joy. I cannot resurrect these two yet because I need another token. I have zero. So now I have four daughters. She's level four and basically has everything that she had last time except the memory I attached because those reset. So basically Joy will be my main unit and then I'll have two new ones. Now what I kind of found, what I eventually ended up doing is eventually you, you can start with three, four, actually ultimately five resurrection tokens. And then basically at the start of a, a lap, you can just resurrect your old party and use them again. So you can't really do that right at the beginning, like where I am, but eventually it kind of becomes kind of pointless to use a new set, a new daughter when you can resurrect your old ones pretty readily. I can give her. So basically, even if you're absolutely mm -hmm. awful at strategizing and actually creating a good comp, you can kind of brute force it just through repetition and earning these buffs each yeah. round through. Yep. Um, and that's pretty much how the game yeah. flows from there until the end. Yeah. Like you, there's a, there's five bosses. You, they pretty much, you take them on in the exact same order and way you gain more skills, of course, as you play through the game. But I, maybe from this video, you can see how it is kind of roguelike -ish in nature. It's not a very outwardly told story. There is a story, but it's, it's kind of left in the background for the most part. And in the codex, it does get maybe a little bit repetitive because of how the mission structure is and the fact that you're going to have to just replay levels over and over. They're kind of bite-sized missions that you do sort of thing. But yeah, that's that's a pretty much the vertical slice of the game and what it's like. Um, uh, one thing we didn't see really was different types of missions. Like, does the, the, the objective change very much ever when you get later yeah. into later chapters or days? Um, there are other missions where you rescue a unit. There are other missions where you have to survive for a certain amount of time on the timeline. Um, so there are a few different types of missions. But so this I just so happen to always pick up hunts, and they're more they're more. Uh, prominent in the very first parts of the game. But yeah, that's pretty much what the game is. I do think it does have some pretty interesting tactical, like direct tactical combat uh, in places. And I do think it's kind of an interesting new kind of take on the genre. Like there are not many tactical RPGs play like this. Um, but there are just some things where I think it could have executed better, especially when it comes to some of this resurrecting balance stuff. I didn't even mention, but that second icon on the upper left, that 300, that is a Vitae currency. It costs currency to attach these things to your daughters. Like this one costs 100. But ultimately, you end up getting so much of it that it's kind of like I, I literally don't even pay attention to it and almost forgot it was there. Like it's just, it's just a gimme. It's like a resource management that doesn't actually <laughs> require being managed. Yeah. And later, it I is easier really to get the token. I was just gonna say I do think the game is like really stylish. I, it's it's kind of cool that it like goes into this gothic horror, Lovecraftian almost vibe without specifically trying to orient itself as a horror game. It's just meant to be like spooky and creepy, as far as yeah, I can tell. Yeah, it's not a scary game. I think it does call it did actually call itself a horror game, but it's not like actually like scary. And I don't know how you could really make a a tactical RPG scary rather than you know a first person game. But yeah, that's. I, I would recommend this game for people who like tactical RPGs, who like roguelikes, and want to try something that is different and just kind of understand that it is made from a small studio. Um, this is, I believe, their first game. Uh, it's It may be kind of rough around the edges in places, and it doesn't have, you know, an word storyline for the most part, so it's not a very story-driven game. So you kind of have to be a, you kind of have to be a systems nerd, I think, um, to really appreciate it. It innovates more than it executes, but I would say uh, you probably haven't played anything like it. Like, 
I it, definitely say that barring like any very specific, very obvious like problems with a game, I'd rather play something that tries something different than yeah. uh, something that feels too iterative. Mm-hmm. And with that, that's other side. It is currently available on PC, uh, Xbox One, and PS4. Switch coming soon. And with that, oh, thank it's you always for cool to see. Like, uh, I was just gonna say, it's always cool to see like new blood and people making debut games, and even if they're not, you know, amazing representations of their talent, just be, just to see them put out a product and hopefully be the start of a long series of products, and hopefully they're around a long time. Yep, so thank you for uh, tuning in, and we'll see you next week with another Casual Mode video. Take care. Bye, everyone. See ya. See ya.